How can I help? It was less of a dream and more of a vision. A vision the two of us shared. But I am certainly willing to answer any questions the Jedi Council did not. Perhaps because we desired to. Perhaps because they came to this planet and were strong enough in the Force to leave a, a trace. They did something important here. Of that, I am certain. It may be simply that we are sensitive to that event, or it may not. We dreamed about Revan and Malak either because we were meant to or because we needed to. There is no other way to look at it. I have no idea. It was obviously important, however. That is why we must investigate this further. With luck, we will. I would rather not rely on such visions to guide us. But when we have so little else to go on, and the galaxy hangs in the balance... As you wish. We really should return our thoughts to business anyway. How can I help? I do. How did you know? I'm a Jedi. I am far too disciplined to betray my emotions with outward physical displays. We both know the real reason you have some idea of what I'm thinking, the bond we share. Our connection allows us glimpses into each other's mind. We can feel some of what the other feels, and what I feel within you troubles me. A Padawan must receive considerable training. They must learn to control their emotions and darker impulses. Often it takes years before using the Force can be considered safe. The fact that you are so strong in the Force and have had such relatively little training could have terrible consequences. For you, and for everyone around you. I don't think there's much you can do. If things were different, I would recommend several years of training under one of the Jedi Masters. But I fear that won't be possible. Thankfully, you've exhibited a degree of compassion and self-control up to this point. I sincerely hope you can maintain these traits in the future. We must all resist the influence of the dark side. It's everything we are fighting against. This is doubly important for you, with your natural affinity for the Force. That's good to hear. Without the proper training, however, I'm afraid you will find the path difficult even with the best of intentions. There's great danger ahead for both of us. Our destinies are intertwined. Everything one of us does will have consequences for the other. Any reckless behavior on your part is likely to affect me as well. Yes, that is true. I will do my best to guide you, but I am no master. Not yet. And there are times when I find the sheer strength of your power almost overwhelming. Your power could be a gift or a curse. When you need guidance or advice or support, I will do my best to help you stay on the path of the light. I only hope I have the wisdom to help you through the dark times. But for now, we should return to our mission. Yes, what's on your mind? Have I been quiet? Suppose I have. I guess I just don't like being left out of the loop. Left out of the loop, you know, not being told anything strung along. It's really starting to irritate me. For one thing, I want to know what the Jedi Council said to you. They pulled you in there and refused to tell me a thing about it. I'm rather curious to know what went on, and why they didn't keep you on down to for training. Isn't that strange? I may not know much about the Jedi, but I do know they aren't famous for taking on old Padawans and sending them on dangerous assignments. A bond? What kind of bond? You mean to say that they told you that you were tied to Bastila in some way? Huh, <laughs> I have trouble believing that. You're a neophyte Padawan who's been saddled with the responsibility of tracking down these star maps. Why? That's not normal. I am not trying to provoke you or to imply that you're somehow responsible for the Jedi Council, but give me a hand here. There has to be a reason. And what does that mean? Is this more of that destiny garbage that the Jedi keep talking about? Well, that can't be it. Well, I'll tell you this much. I'm not going to wait around until I'm betrayed again. Yeah, well, 
privacy about that one, Wayne. Look, I didn't mean it that way. I want to get to Saul, not... No, no, forget it. It just seems that all I can do is insult you, isn't it? Just forget I said anything. Let's, let's just get on with what we were doing. I feel I must apologize for the way I acted towards you before, in the grove. It was wrong of me. I am sorry for attacking you. I am sorry for thinking you would only try to kill me. I hope that by helping you in your task, I may redeem myself in your eyes, and in my own. Thank you. It is most reassuring to know that you can forgive me, even though I tried to take your life. I can only hope that, in our time journeying together, I will succeed. How may I be of assistance to you, Padawan? What is it you would like to speak to me about? How I came to be a Jedi? I am sure you would not find it very interesting. Are you sure you would like to hear? Well, it goes back a number of years. Back on my homeworld, we did not see Jedi very often, especially where I lived. It was not the homeworld of the Cathar that I lived on. My parents had long fled from that place. And perhaps that is a story for another time. Rather, it was a human hive world that I was raised on. The hind end of space. A pit of a world, to be sure, where Jedi rarely tread. But we had heard of them. Well, everyone had, so that is not to be unexpected. Champions of truth, defenders of justice, heroes of the Republic. It was very easy for a child to be enthralled by their image, their mystique. 
Maybe I was one of those children. Yes, yes I did. When I saw a Jedi for the first time, they lived up to everything my imagination had created them to be. I was old, and maybe a little enamored. They were quite striking, especially the tales of their leader. From that moment on, I knew that I would have to try to become a Jedi. To lift myself out of the rut I had been living in for years, and to make a real difference as the Jedi were. <laughs> the foolish delusions of a child. But this child made it happen. As soon as I was able, I left my world and went in search of them. I found them and was accepted. I had been living my dream on Dantooine for several years before you came. Although, perhaps I was not entirely ready for it. Or not completely suited to the task. Otherwise, I would not have fallen. But thanks to you, I have been redeemed. Perhaps I may yet live to see that dream of mine come true. Come, there is much we should do. Let us not waste time talking. Action is what is needed. How may I be of assistance to you? What is it you would like? I, I, I thank you for your concern, but I am still a bit shaken. I have been thinking about myself, about Quatra, and about my fall to the dark side. I keep thinking that it was my anger that drove me that far, that nearly damned me. I look inside myself now and I can still see it. I still feel it. More time would do me good. Time to distance myself from that anger. I think that is why the Council agreed to send me with you. They think, perhaps, that in your company, I will be able to free myself from it. I thank you for your concern and your acceptance. I will strive to prove that I am worthy of your company and trust. How may I be... What the... Of course. Huh? Oh, sorry. I was thinking about Terrace. I still can't believe it's gone. I mean, I grew up there and now it's... it's... it's just gone. I don't really think there's anything you can say. I just have to find some way to deal with it, I guess. It'll take some time. Look, I'm not saying I can't go on or anything like that. It's just, it's a shock, you know? I mean, I knew the Sith were evil and all, but the reality of it kind of slaps you in the face. But I suppose that's why we need to stop Malak, right? The more time I spend dwelling on Terrace, the more chance some other planet will get wiped out. I guess that's what it comes down to. So don't worry about me. I'll be okay. And if you need my help against Malik or the Sith, I'll be there for you. Hey there. What can I do for No problem. Just so happens I've got one here. Anything else? No problem. Anything else you need? No problem. Anything? No problem. Anything? No problem. Anything else? No problem. Anything. No problem. Just anything else. No problem. Anything. Sorry. Hey there. What can I do? I'm sorry for the way I acted before. It's just that when it comes to Lena, I tend to get a little worked up. My brother and me had a good thing going. Sure, Griff had his run-ins with the law on Terrace, but we got by okay, until Lena came and ruined everything. She was a dancer at the cantina where my brother used to go play Pazic. Griff could be a real smooth talker, and it wasn't long before the two of them were dating. But Lena was used to dating rich Theresian nobles, guys with mountains of credits. Griff could never give her the lifestyle she was used to, no matter how hard he worked. I thought Lena would brush Griff off when she saw how poor he was, but 
For some reason, she stuck around. I guess she saw the potential for a big payday down the road. After they'd been together for a few months, Griff told me he was leaving Terrace. He and Lena were gonna try and make their fortune off-world. He promised as soon as he made enough credits, he'd come back and get me, and we'd all live like royalty. That was two years ago. I haven't seen him since. I don't even know where he went. Oh, I know what happened. As soon as she got him off Taurus, Lena sunk her claws into Griff but good. She twisted him around her little finger and made him forget all about me. I know I'll probably never see Griff again. But part of the reason I came with you was the hope that I could find out what happened to my brother. Don't worry. I won't let the search for Griff get in the way of what we're doing. Let's just get back to the task at hand. Is there anything else I can help you with? Want to practice your skills, eh? Sure, I'll play. Yeah, what do you want? <laughs> Here's a stammer. Are there any? <laughs> Here's a. Are there any? Is there anything? Is there any? Here's a. St there anything? Here's a. There any? Here's a. There anything else? Here's a. There anything? Here's a. There. Hey, don't a real warrior know there anything? Your. Ch Yeah, what do you want? I was one of the best youth warriors in the clan Ordo in my time. No one before me had mastered the power of our basilisk war droids as quickly as I had. Except Mandalore himself, of course. In those days, we were sweeping across the Outer Rim, destroying all who fought us. Young Mandalores would prove themselves in real combat with unknown opponents above a thousand worlds. Each brought back stories of his achievements. I remember it well, orbiting high above a placid world, its defenses just stirring. As was tradition, I would go ahead of the first wave to find enemies in the thickest fighting. I remember sitting there in my armor, linked directly with a basilisk thrumming beneath me, my heart racing with fear of the coming battle.
The doors opened in front of me, and the air was sucked out of the drop bay, scattering crystals of frozen vapor across my path. I can't describe what it feels like to look directly down at a world, falling continuously as you circle it, with barely 15 centimeters of armor plate protecting you. When the magnetic locks disengaged on my droid, I plunged out of the drop bay towards the battle that waited below. The exhilaration, the euphoria I felt as I streaked into the atmosphere, dodging self-guided projectiles and beam weapons, was unmatched. An 80-kilometer plunge through the atmosphere, dodging and weaving, the outside of my armor glowing like the sun with the heat of re-entry. And with barely 30 meters to spare, I twisted and skimmed the surface, firing at the giant beam generators that were in my path. The explosion from that sent shock waves that leveled the entire complex around it. It was the moment of my life. I'll never forget those times. But things are different now. We can't go on fighting the way we did. There are too few of us left now. But I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I trust I've satisfied your curiosity for now. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice. I... Yeah, what do you want? You want another war story, huh? You want to hear about some other world getting wasted, eh? I knew you were the type. Your stagnant republic has never seen some of the strange creatures and races we fought on the Outer Rim in those years. <laughs> and you never will now. We were going through the asteroid fields of the Crispin system at the very edge of the galaxy, playing with the pirates and smugglers we found there. The main belt in the Crispin system consists of mainly small rocks covered in frozen methane gas shells, and the pirates were using them for cover. Ha! <laughs> I remember using a thermal generator to cause the outer layer of one of the asteroids to vaporize in a picosecond. It blew out and shredded the three smugglers using it for cover. But that was a mistake. The asteroid I had targeted was smaller than most, maybe a dozen meters on a side. On the outside, it looked the same as any other, just a ball covered in frozen gas. But something must have been inside it, something inactive in the cold. The heat of my blast might have triggered something or woken something up. After I'd hit it, spots of light and heat appeared all over the thin shell, still covering it, evaporating the gases. What lay underneath looked like some sort of rocky growth. A deformed rock, pitted by scores of micrometeorite scars. I think something even older might have been inside that. It started rotating faster and faster as we watched it. After a second, it started spraying fire, thermal projectiles that melted our armor like wax. We were caught completely by surprise. Before we could counterattack, it fled at an incredible speed. We couldn't catch it, but we could follow its hyperspace wake. We followed its trail as far as we could, heading away from the galactic core. When it finally led beyond the edge of our galaxy, we abandoned our efforts. Anything that wants to commit suicide in that great void is not worth our trouble trying to catch. Uh, that's the only story I have for now. I'll tell you some more stuff later if we get the chance. Is there something else you want to know? Your choice. Yeah, what do you want? Your... Mission, is that you? It's me, Lena, remember? I was dating your brother back on Terrace. Lena? What are you doing here? Where's Griff? I'm just passing through. Griff and I broke up a few months after we left Terras together. Probably for the best. Your brother can be charming, Mission, but he's bad news. 
Don't you start trashing my brother, you cantina rat. Take that back or I'll smack you so hard your head tails will pop off. Shin, what's wrong with you? Why are you acting this way? You've got your facts a little backwards. Mission could have come with us if she wanted to. It was her choice to stay behind. You liar! Griff told me that you didn't want his little sister tagging along. That's why he had to leave me behind. Is that what the hut spawn told you? I wanted you to come with us, Mission. I even offered to pay for your ticket. Why not? I paid for everything else while I was with that freeloader. But he told me you didn't want to leave Terrace. I said we shouldn't even go then. But he said we'd come back and get you after we struck it rich on Tatooine. Just another one of his lies. No, you're the one who's lying. Griff wouldn't... He wouldn't try to leave me behind. Think about it. If Griff wasn't trying to ditch you, Mission, then why didn't he tell you where we were going? After we left Terrace, he told me looking after you was holding him back. Griff's always looking to blame other people for his own problems. That's why he abandoned you. He did the same thing to me, too. As soon as I ran out of money, he started blaming me for all of his problems. Like it's my fault his get-rich-quick schemes never work out. Hey, if you want to talk to Griff, go ahead. Last I heard, he was going to make a fortune working the Zerka Corp mines on Tatooine. But as far as I'm concerned, he's out of my life forever. Griff's better off without you anyway, you table-dancing, brother-stealing, home-wrecker. I guess that's my cue to leave then. I didn't mean to upset you, Mission. But one day you'll see I'm right about your brother. I only hope it's not too late by then. Yes, what's on your mind? You got it. How can I help? Yes, I did. I wanted to speak to you about our mission and what lies ahead for us. It seems fate, or the Force, is driving us into a confrontation with the Dark Lord. You must prepare yourself for when we face Malak. The confrontation will be difficult for you. I remember how hard it was when I first faced Revan. It's true that due to my battle meditation, I was with the Jedi Strike team that boarded Revan's ship. We did not kill Revan, however. Our mission was to capture Revan if possible. It was Malak who turned on his own master, firing upon Revan's ship while we were still on board it. It was his desire to kill us and his master both. Thankfully, we narrowly escaped the vessel as it exploded. As I said, we were there to capture Revan alive. The Jedi do not believe in killing their prisoners. No one deserves execution, no matter what their crimes. Remember that Revan and Malak were once great Jedi, heroes in every sense of the word. They demonstrate the danger of the dark side to us all. I'm sorry, we really shouldn't speak of this anymore. The memory of my confrontation with Revan is painful. Let's return to the mission, please. How can I help? Yes, I suppose I can understand your curiosity, given the bond that connects us. Very well. I'll tell you a bit about myself. I was found to be strong with the Force at a young age, as most Padawans are. As a girl, I was given to the Order to be trained. When I joined the Order, I left my family on Tal Ravan, as all Padawans do. My family is still there, the last that I heard. I've had little contact with them, as it is discouraged. Relationships with family members are fraught with powerful emotions. Such extremes are to be avoided. Anger and hate are the worst, but even love can lead to folly. Like all who join the Order, I have learned to embrace the life I've chosen. I had to let go of my attachments to my family. It can be a hard lesson to learn. I was not on good terms with all of my family, but I do remember missing my father terribly for a long time. I was not on good terms with my mother. I was only a little girl when I left, but I was old enough to resent her and the way she treated my father. 
She pushed my father into treasure hunting. I spent all my young life on ships, traveling from one false lead to the next. She whittled away my father's entire fortune, and I hated her for it. I think she was relieved to give me to the Jedi, but my father was heartbroken. A child is too young to understand the sacrifices that must be made. It's better if they have no contact with their family once they're removed. Once I was older, I realized the wisdom of this policy. A Jedi must do what is needed, personal desires notwithstanding. Love can only obscure and confuse the matter. Even a Jedi cannot always control the feelings of the heart. We must do our best to guard against it, no matter what the cost. But some sacrifices are harder than others. I, I do not wish to discuss this anymore. I would rather return to our mission. How can I help? Then I suggest we move... Then I suggest we...
How can I help? I do. I've been watching you, studying you closely to see what kind of progress you've made since your training at the hands of Master Zahn. I've seen how you've resisted many temptations and continued to walk the path of the light side. Very commendable, but I'm afraid you might stray from this path. You need to see what the dark side represents in its entirety, for it is what we battle. Only the wisdom of a Jedi Master can truly explain this, but I will do my best to make you understand. The dark side is not simply giving in to anger, or temptation, or to use the force to destruct events. These things only lead to the dark side. The dark side grows stronger and more insidious the closer you draw to it. It begs you to surrender to it, to release all its terrible power, and it becomes harder and harder to resist. And once you stop resisting, it's too late. It twists you up inside and turns you into a mockery of everything you once stood for. I am no less resistant to temptation than any other. I simply have the benefit of training that you do not. But even the training of the Jedi might not be enough to save us. We need only to look at the atrocities which have been committed by those under its sway to understand the terrible, corrupting evil of the dark side. Millions dead, and far more suffering. What sort of person would you have to become to perform such deeds gladly? Neither do I, and I hope I never do. It's so easy to think that we would never fall prey to such a horror, that we have unlimited control, vigilance, and foresight. If only that were true. The Sith have become powerful because there are many Jedi who've succumbed to the lure of the dark side and joined their cause. What greater weapon is there than to turn an enemy to your cause, to use their own knowledge against them? We are weakened while they are strengthened, so we must harden our hearts and do whatever is required to fight against the dark side, even when the battle becomes wearying. I don't know. The vision of our future is clouded by shadows cast from the dark side, but I sense something ominous lurking in those shadows. But words alone cannot save one from the dark side. Come, we should continue with the task at hand. When the time comes, I only hope we are all strong enough to do what we must. How can I help? Can I suggest... Chua Penki, Yun Patisa, Tichuba Ki Muli.
Kiwi Muli Ra Kiwi Aita Kat Ichuta Yuki Muli Ra Kiwi Tong Hitwama Baba Has Achua Penki Yun Jiska Nosoki Tong Hitwama Chi Chi Muli Ra Chi Kakin Chan Chi Wi Aita Chi Wa Er Aita Tong Hit Wama Ag I Chi Wa Er Chi Muli Ra Chi Muli Ra Chi Chi Wi Pa Kakin Chi Chi Wa Kak Kakin Cha How can I help? Why? I could not accomplish this on my own. I need the aid of others, especially one who is strong in the Force. The bond between us made you a natural choice. Besides, the events on Taurus proved that the Force wanted to bring us together for this mission. And there is little left to chance when the Force is involved. Is that not enough for you? I admit, there were times that I wondered if this is more than just a mission to stop Malak. There were times when I wondered if this was also a way for the Council to test my own abilities. I wondered if the Council wanted to see how I would help and guide you on our quest. I wondered if they were testing me to see if I was ready to become a Jedi Master myself. And then I realized how foolish such thoughts were. As the Council explained, sending a Master in our group would only have drawn unwanted attention from the Sith. The fate of the galaxy is at stake. The Council would not risk it merely to test me. They calculated the risks, and in the end chose the only option available. You must learn to trust in the wisdom of the Council. Your destiny will come when it's appointed time. You mustn't be so impatient. Come on, come. Let's move on. There's much to be done. How can I help? Can I suggest? Yes, what's on your mind? I don't really know much about... You got it.
The Force has given us a, a vision, like the one we shared on Dantooine. Did you see it? Of course. You must have. The Force is strong with us both. Tatooine is known for little but blowing sand. I find it surprising that there would be a star map somewhere in its desolate wastes. The star map would likely have to be within some kind of shelter to protect it against dust and sandstorms. I suspect there are many such caves and caverns hidden in the sands of the Dune Sea. The creatures of this world probably use them as their lairs. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. How can I help? Then I suggest... Welcome to Anchorhead, potential customer. Zerka Corporation stands ready to serve, after some formalities, of course. First, your ship is not on our list of planned arrivals for today. There is a docking fee of 100 credits because of this. The immediate benefit is access to these very docking facilities. This is the only port in Anchorhead. Once you've paid, we will offer trade services as well. We're not unreasonable, we just want to cover expenses. I assure you that the fee is non-negotiable. We have a very thin margin of profit on this world. That does make sense. I suppose I could let it go this time. We need the business. This will cover any future landings as well. It's like a registration, so we can serve you better when you return. Now, as a customs officer, I can provide information on services. Is this visit business or pleasure? It depends on what level of risk you want to take. You could ask at the Zerka office if any bounties need collecting. That's in the central anchor head. While you're at the office, ask for a hunting license so you can sell trophies to Faza in his lodge, just north of them. I suppose you could also take up swoop racing. Talk to the hut at the registration office by the track. That's in West Anchorhead. I can't say I know which of these jobs is the most dangerous. I stay away from all of them. That's not much information. Could you tell me more? You a digger? I've heard of ruins being found now and then, but they've always been stripped by sand people soon after. You're not going to get anywhere with them. I guess you could ask around, but I doubt you'll learn anything different. You could always ask a Jawa. It's hard to tell what they know. As you wish. If you need anything else, I'll be here. Tatooine's a dust bowl, and that's all it'll ever be.
Curtiu a Penki? Tony do Baba, Hassan, Chá. Smilia! Please, will you help me? I have nothing, nothing left. Oh, thank you. I don't have anywhere else to turn. If you're down and out on Tatooine, you're on your own. My husband was a hunter, killed out on the dunes. This raid plate is all I have left. Please, will you buy it? I don't need a handout. I just can't sell it to Faza without a license. Please, I'm worried about having it. They're so rare. I still can't believe he's gone. What do you want to know? His name is... was Ward Fizark. He used to work in the mines, but they scaled back last year. He was new to hunting, but he was a good fighter. He used to be a soldier. We spent everything on his gear. After a few trips, he didn't come back. Guards say his sandcrawler crew found his body stripped of everything. Nobody saw anything, and most of the other hunters never even knew him. He had just started. I don't trust any of them. But those Gamorians, they just laugh when they see me. I think they did it. Will you buy it? I can't sell it myself. I... I don't know. How could I be sure you would come back? Are you sure you can't buy it? Please. I'm sorry, but I can't take that chance. Are you sure you can't buy it from me? Please. We'll know. Yes, what's on your mind? I'm not really sure, but you can... How can I help? I can try. What would you like me to recall? Then I suggest... How can I help? I wish I could help you.
Another vision. The Force is guiding us, helping us retrace the steps of Malak and his old master, leading us ever closer to the Star Forge. Kashek is a lush but simple and undeveloped world. I would not have expected to find the alien technology of a star map here. The Wookiees of Kashek make their home high among the Rosha branches. Only their bravest warriors dare to descend into the forbidding depths of the forest. If the star map is located far beneath us on the planet's surface, as our vision seems to suggest, it's unlikely the Wookiees even know of its existence. No doubt things will become more clear once we discover the star map's location. How can I help? Then I suggest... Salbar should be here. He shouldn't miss this. He needs to know he can come back here. I can't talk for Big Z, but believe me, he should be with us. He's got unfinished business here. You'd think they'd be grateful to leave this barbaric place. <laughs> Watch yourself. We don't need anyone actually in the world. How can I help? Can I Welcome to Adia. I trust you will find our facilities pass inspection. Zerka Corporation is very efficient. Please take any inquiries you have to Director Janos. I must continue my work. I'm conducting experiments on various samples of indi- Of course, that will- Farewell. Local fauna is amazing. If I could isolate why the trees grow so big, it would be worth more than a thousand. Fauna is amazing. Yes? Yes? Do 
Kupacie, kupa? Dzino Muller. Mucie się pacha. Taką dziuz tak miki grabal mo. Gdzie to badowane nidi bobo? Mucie się pacha. Taką dziuz tak miki gra. Gdzie to badowane nidi bobo? Mucie się pacha. Taką dziuz tak miki gra. Gdzie to badowane nidi bobo? Mucie się pacha. Taką dziuz tak. Takom juz dach miki. Gdzie do badowane nidi bobo? Tolpa da bong. Gdzie do badowane nidi bobo? Gdzie do badu? Gdzie do badowane? Get lost, tenderfoot. I hunt desert raid. I don't babysit. Well, you sure know how to get on my good side. You're just trotting out banthopaths, but thanks all the same. My name is Doric Quinn. I'm a hunter. I hunt. Is that enough, or should I start listing my family birthdays? 
I don't go telling stories about other people. You want to know what... Uh, one word, though. Watch yourself around the Gamorreans. Girk and his buddies aren't to be trusted. Everyone else I respect because they have skill. Those guys... Just watch your back when you hunt. If that's what... You... Good hunting. What can I do for you? Mm. Did my wife send you? This ain't about credits, is it? Oh, of course. Who put you up to this, my wife? I meant what I said about having no credits. Well, my name is Tannis, and what I do is hunt. I'm sure you've heard of me. Well, actually, I hope you haven't. Ah. Good hunt. You want? I don't have a lot of time for talk, so please make it quick. Well, it's a hole in the galaxy, as far as I'm concerned. But that's happened before and will happen again. Well, Tatooine fools people. It looks like it might have a good supply of. Re before a company learns this, they've already set up. Com company pulls out. I repair the sand crawlers when they return. All right. La boda ni wen kis mak toma. Wana kun best ching ba ma ruli ra. Tok ching ba uba ba tu kochi. Tong nong bong. Kuyami just kun a jik tenai. Yi na kun ba ma ruli ra ra chi kun. Slimo patona. Rundi ha dunga chi hong kabi. La boda ni wen kis mak toma. Wana kun best. Can I help you? These are the offices of the Zerka Corporation. I trust you have business with the company? If this is about employment, I'm afraid all regular mining positions are full. And before you ask, we are also no longer selling hunting licenses. Griff? Uh, there's no Griff here. Never heard of him. No, I, I don't remember a single Griff on the Zerka Corporation payroll. That may help in this instance. Let me think. Perhaps I remember this Griff character. We hired that Twi'lek some time ago. Not a good worker, according to his crew chief. Always complaining and faking injuries to get out of work. He entered false timesheets and slept through his shifts. We even suspected him of stealing Zerka Corporation supplies, although we could never prove it. We would have fired him, but we needed workers. It would have been better for him if he had been fired. Then the Sand People wouldn't have gotten him. He was lost in a Sand People raid we suffered not too long ago. There were prisoners taken, but our rescue parties never found anyone alive. In the end, it just wasn't cost-effective to keep searching. All miners sign a waiver absolving Zerka Corporation of liability in these circumstances. We didn't find his body, so we have to assume he was taken prisoner. Whether he's still alive, I couldn't say. That's all I can tell you. I shouldn't even have said this much. This is all privileged corporate information. I could lose my job. As I said, all employees have signed waivers absolving Zerka Corporation of any financial liability if this occurs. It is the industry standard. I suppose you could apply for a special dispensation from the Zerka Corporation representative kiosk on Coruscant. Business hours only, please. 
Very well. Though I do... As I said, we are no longer selling them. There are too many people cavorting them. Well, normally we charge 200 credits, but I can make an exception if you agree to perform a task for us. It's similar to hunting. The sand people are becoming a problem. They destroy our sand crawlers and kill our miners. One particular tribe is the worst. It's as if their chieftain has decided to wage war against us. I would like their attacks terminated. Bring me their gaffy sticks as proof. If you agree to do this, I'll give you a hunting license now and pay a bounty for each stick later. I'll give a bonus for the chieftains. Which would you rather have dumped on your office floor? Besides, they're ceremonial weapons, unique to each warrior. It's just as good. Excellent. Now, just so we understand each other, this is an enforceable contract. Zerka Corporation takes this very seriously. Here is your license, and a few directions. We believe one of their enclaves is in the far south of the Dune Sea. You might try following one of our sand crawlers. They're regularly attacked. I wouldn't mind you escorting them. Very good. Zerka... La boda ni winkis mactoma. Wanna put best ching pama rulira. We have just two Najik the night. In a cool mama rulira, Rachikun, Slim La boda ni winkis mactoma. Wanna put best ching pama rulira. We have just two Najik the night. In a cool mama rulira, Rachikun, Slim. La boda ni winkis mactoma. Wanna put best ching pama rulira. We have just two Najik the night. In a cool mama rulira, Rachikun, Slim of the La boda ni winkis mactoma. Wanna put best. We have just two Najik the night. In a cool mama rulira, La boda ni winkis mactoma. Wanna put best ching pama rulira. Top ching but we have just two Najik the night. La boda ni winkis mactoma. Wanna put best ching pama rulira. Top ching bang non kit. Top ninja rulira, Rabes. We have just two Najik the night. La boda ni winkis mactoma. We have just two Najik the night. We have just two Najik the night. La boda ni winkis. 